If there is any one discipline of biology that provides the absolute best evidence for evolution, it's genetics. To use the Francis Collins quote from Pointing to Common Ancestry, quote, Yes, evolution by descent from a common ancestor is clearly true. If there was any lingering doubt about the evidence from the fossil record, the study of DNA provides the strongest possible proof of our relatedness to all other living things, close quote. He's right. But genetics doesn't only provide one way to reasonably infer evolution, it provides a multitude. So let's look at some. The first is pretty obvious. We share over 95% of DNA sequences with chimps. Yes, including the non-coding regions. This fact has been repeatedly verified over the years, including in the 2012 paper, The Bonobo Genome Compared with the Chimpanzee and Human Genomes, that says, quote, on average, the two alleles in single-copy autosomal regions in the Ulindi, a female bonobo, genome are approximately 99.9% .9 identical to each other, 99.6% identical to corresponding sequences in the chimpanzee genome, and 98.7% identical to corresponding sequences in the human genome. Close quote. Is this just a coincidence? But the genetic similarities don't stop there. Chimps and humans also share endogenous retroviruses, or ERVs, a type of virus that we discussed in GMOs Aren't Harmful. How many? Well, humans have 40 of the 42 ERV families that chimps have, and only 100 ERVs are human-specific. Humans and chimps also share at least 200,000 ERVs, so 100 accounts for less than 1% of 200,000. Thus, humans and chimps share over 99% of ERVs. Is this a coincidence too? What about transposons? Transposons, or transposable elements, are DNA sequences that can change their position within the genome. They can create or reverse mutations and can alter the genome size. According to the 2007 paper, The Evolutionary History of Human DNA Transposons, Evidence for Intense Activity in the Primate Lineage, Humans share 40 DNA transposon families with all other primates. Is this a third coincidence? And what of our functionless pseudogenes? Pseudogenes are genes related to real genes that can be partially or totally non-functional. Now, all haplorine primates, that is, tarsiers, monkeys, and apes, have a non-functional pseudogene that codes for an enzyme called GULO, which stands for l gulonolactone oxidase, that produces vitamin C. For animals generally, the GULO gene works, allowing the animals to produce the vitamin. However, the gene is a non-functional pseudogene in all haplorine primates, but not strepsorine primates. Strepsorines are lemurs, lorises, and the II, but the group previously went under a different name that contained tarsiers as well, called prosimians. As it happens, tarsiers have the GULO pseudogene, and that has allowed anthropologists to conclude that tarsiers are members of haplorini not strepsorini, since strepsorines have a functional gulo gene. So creationists would probably say that this just shows tarsiers are part of the haplorine kind. Or would that be the primate kind? Or the mammal kind? Or the animal kind? Who knows? Anyway, this deficiency in vitamin C production has primarily restricted primates to the world's tropical regions, whether South America, Africa, or Southeast Asia because they must live in areas where they can find foods that provide the vitamin. In humans, scurvy is the result of vitamin C deficiency. Now, would creationists allow for scientists to classify tarsiers as haplorines using the GULO pseudogene, but not humans? Or would creationists reject that both tarsiers and humans are haplorines? Is the similarity in the GULO pseudogene between us and other primates a fourth coincidence? And what of Krupple-associated box domain containing zinc finger proteins, or KZFPs for short? Zinc finger proteins are a diverse group of proteins containing at least one zinc ion that often bind DNA, RNA, proteins, and other small molecules. On the other hand, KZFPs are proteins that often suppress transposons, and all tetrapods as well as lungfish and coelacanths have them. In other words, all living Sarcopterygians have KZFPs. 
Is this a fifth coincidence? And what about how the human lice lineage split from the chimp lice lineage at the same time the human chimp lineage is split around six million years ago? Surely that's a sixth coincidence. However, the creationists would probably answer no to each of the questions regarding coincidental similarities and would instead say that common similarities necessitate a common designer. The problem with this is that it addresses nothing. If a single designer is responsible for all the similarities of organisms, then is a different designer responsible for every difference? Is the common designer also responsible for both similarities and differences? How do you know? What is one method by which you could either confirm or falsify the concept of a common designer? The fact is that there is no method, there's only the assertion of a common designer. Could we falsify common descent on the other hand? Absolutely. If we were so similar to chimps morphologically, but we were more closely related to, say, the puffer fish genetically, then that would falsify common ancestry. Common Ancestry even allows us to make predictions and experiments, as we shall see in the upcoming video, Common Ancestry. While Creationism allows us to make neither. Creationism necessarily fails to even allow us to make predictions, since the common designer can upend all physical laws on a whim. If the creator decides one day, you know, I'm just not feeling this whole strong force thing, then every atomic nucleus in the whole universe blows apart. And what's there to stop him? Nothing. He's omnipotent, after all. But I digress. You see now that genetics is the best evidence for evolution as it provides a number of different routes that come to the same conclusion. We are apes, and we are related to other non-human life. It doesn't matter if you don't like being called an ape, you are one. Even if you ignore all the phylogenetic evidence that's been presented so far, you must contend with the fact that there's even a spider, the Australian funnel web spider, that's lethal to primates. So of course it's lethal to humans too. You must accept that you have all the characteristics diagnostic of a hominin anthropoid primate. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.